This is AEDT 2150U, Digital Technologies and Advanced Teaching Methods. The title for this particular video clip is Open Educational Resources. The analysis questions for this particular video clip are as follows. What is an OER? How should we design OERs? What are the theoretical underpinnings of OERs? And how are OERs organized? An open educational resource, or an OER, is any digital document that can be reused for teaching, learning, doing research, playing, or living that is available to anyone through an open license. Using OERs does not lead to a degree, nor does it provide academic support to learners. In other words, an OER is a learning object that is offered through open license. According to the William and Flora Hulut Foundation, OERs are teaching, learning, and research resources that reside in the public domain or have been released under an intellectual property license that permits their free use or repurposing by others. Open educational resources include full courses, course materials, modules, textbooks, streaming videos, tests, software, and any other tools, materials, or techniques used to support access to knowledge. The predecessor of OERs was the Learning Object, or the LO. The term was coined by Wayne Hodgins in 1994, but the concept comes from an idea that R. W. Gerard had in 1967. By definition, a learning object is any item that can be used towards achieving a learning objective. The difference between LOs and OERs is that OERs have to be digital and free. Learning objects could be sold in a folder as a class resource, but could also be free and digital. Let's look at the OER logo. We can find this logo uh, online, and it is through the website of the UNESCO that we can find a full manual. Again, the link for this is uh, available through the course outline. OER Commons is an initiative of the Institute for the Study of Knowledge Management in Education, which is also known as the ISKME, I-S-K-M-E. It allows educators to contribute and consult resources inside an aggregated environment. You can browse resources from this link, www.oercommons.org slash OER. OER Commons provides tools to evaluate the quality of OERs developed by Achieve. Achieve is a non-profit organization that strives to improve academic standards in the U.S. You can have access to these rubrics by uh, typing in www.achieve.org slash OER hyphen rubrics. Stop this video to download the rubrics and to listen to at least one of the related videos. You will notice that OERs are rated against a set of specific criteria. Each resource in OER Commons has a link to an Evaluate Resource button. Anyone can see how the resource has been evaluated. Resources are rated on a four-point rating scale, 3, 2, 1, and 0. And the criteria are as, as follows. 3 is for superior, 2 is for strong, 1 is for limited, and 0 is for very weak or no value. There is also the option of uh, using the non-applicable rating, and that means that the rubric is not applicable to the object. But it does not mean that the score is negative, it's simply that the object cannot be rated against any of the criteria of the rubric. The best way to understand how OER Commons work is to create an account and go through the procedure of creating an OER. For the purpose of this course, you do not need to create an OER. You can simply create your account from this page, which is www.oercommons.org slash contribute. Next, you validate your account by clicking on the link they will send by email. Third, 
Have a look at the authoring tool that allows you to write an OER, describe it, and publish it. Learning objects have been criticized by many because, by definition, if an object is usable in one context, it is not usable in the other. In an article titled Three Objections to Learning Objects and E-Learning Standards, Norm Friesen explains that learning objects are problematic for three reasons. The term learning object suggests neither simplicity, compatibility, nor any obvious relative advantage over prevailing teaching practice. This means that learning objects must be adapted to the teaching context. Second, specifications and applications that are truly pedagogically neutral cannot also be pedagogically relevant. Learning objects are not teachers. They need to be used by teachers and learners for learning purposes. And third, the goals of public education are radically different than those of the American military, which is at the origin of instructional design as we have seen in previous courses. What do you think that some objectives to OERs might be? The synthesis questions for this video clip are the following. If you had OERs to produce, how would you design them and how would you disseminate them? Explain how the quality of an OER is evaluated. What do you think would be the advantages and pitfalls of a teaching method that adopts OERs as a means of disseminating information to students? And finally, draft an idea for an OER in one page be ready to share it on the forum and discuss it during the tutorial.